our whistle stop tour of the regional studios with Lorraine Kelly in Scotland. Scotland is a scene of humiliation for the Tory party this morning. There's been a swing to Labour of almost 8%. When Parliament dissolved, the Tories had 21 seats. Now it's just 10. Labour has gained nine and the Scottish Nationalists three. Three results are still to be declared. There is some consolation for the Conservatives. Defence Secretary George Younger held on by the skin of his teeth after a recount at Ayr and a split in the anti-Tory vote kept Scottish Secretary Malcolm Ripkind in Edinburgh Pentlands. The night saw a body blow to Alliance hopes when Roy Jenkins lost Glasgow Hillhead to Labour's George Galloway. All 11 Glasgow seats are now Labour. There were upsets too for the SNP. They won three seats from the Conservatives, but Chairman Gordon Wilson lost Dundee East to Labour and the Western Isles, held by the SNP since 1970, went the same way. The North-South divide is just as apparent here in the north of England, where Labour now have 56 of the 90 seats in the region, with 11 results still to declare today, including a recount at Dewsbury. In a good turnout, Labour gained five seats, Leeds West from the Alliance, and from the Conservatives, Halifax, Bradford North, Newcastle Central, and Glamford and Scunthorpe. The Conservatives took three seats, all from the Alliance, Stockton South, Cone Valley and Rydale, the seat they lost in the 1986 by-election. So the Alliance voters virtually collapsed here, leaving just Berwick to declare today. The blow to the Alliance was particularly bitter, with well-known names Ian Rigglesworth and Michael Meadowcroft losing their seats. But it's good news for David Blunkett, one of Labour's best-known faces. He'll be entering Parliament for the first time on Wednesday. Here in Wales, it's been a night of triumph for Labour, with a swing of almost 8% their way. The Conservatives have lost four seats to Labour, Bridgend, Cardiff West, Clwyd South West and Newport West. And in Innes Morn, Plaid Cymru's Yian Evans has taken the seat following the recent resignation of Conservative Keith Best. Labour's resurgence was marked by a sweeping victory for leader Neil Kinnock in Islewyn, where he took an unprecedented 71% of the vote. With five Tory losses overall, the Conservatives may now have to choose an English MP as Secretary of State for Wales. So, with just one seat left to declare later today, the state of the parties in Wales is Conservatives 8, Labour 24, Alliance 2 and Plaid Cymru 3. The West and South West remain Conservative strongholds this morning. With 42 results in, nothing has changed on the political map. The six remaining results will be declared later today. The Conservatives had 44 seats, the Alliance 3, Labour 1, and it's almost certain to stay that way. This is the region where the Alliance thought they'd make a breakthrough. They failed. Chris Patton, the high-flying junior minister, saw off the SDP challenge in Bath. Richard Holm, friend and advisor to David Steele, couldn't take Cheltenham for the Liberals. Labour held on to Bristol South, but with a reduced majority. And Labour would be disappointed not to have take, retaken Bristol East. That's Tony Benn's old seat. For David Owen, here in Plymouth, a disastrous night for his party, the only consolation gaining his biggest majority in 21 years of representing his home city. Well, overall, the South East looks pretty much the same, a net gain of two seats for the Conservatives. Now they control 125 of 128 constituencies. Only a few seats changed hands. Labour gained Oxford East and Norwich South from the Tories, who in turn won Ipswich and Thurrock from Labour, and the Isle of Wight, and after two recounts, Portsmouth South from the Alliance. Clement Freud lost Cambridgeshire North East for the Alliance, and Shirley Williams missed Cambridge by more than 5,000 votes. But home and dry, Tory wet, Sir Ian Gilmore, right-winger Teddy Taylor, and Paul Channon, whose family has held South End West for 75 years. Also safe, the Education Secretary Kenneth Baker and Foreign Secretary Sir Geoffrey Howe. And so, pretty much as expected, very few surprises. Now, Gary Imlach with the London results. Nowhere was the news better for Mrs Thatcher than the capital. As well as her predictable victory in Finchley, the Conservatives took Walthamstow from Labour and unseated two leading members of the opposition, Nick Rainsford in Fulham and Alf Dubbs in Battersea. In reply, Labour didn't gain a single seat and the ones they held could mean more trouble than comfort for Neil Kinnock. Ken Livingstone headed a group of active left-wingers, among them the first black MPs, Bernie Grant, Paul Burtang and Diane Abbott. The alliance failed even in highly marginal Richmond, and Rosie Barnes held Greenwich only with a reduced majority. With three results to come today, including Dulwich, where there's a recount, 
the Tories have nearly 60 of London's 84 seats. The capital is now no longer a mirror of the national picture, but firmly a part of the affluent South East. Now the northwest of England results from Paul Newman. Well, here in the northwest, it was undoubtedly the Conservatives' night as they lost just two seats compared to their performance at the last general election. This morning, the Tories have 34 of the region's 73 seats, Labour have 36 and the Alliance three. Labour's only success in their 22 target constituencies came in the Conservatives' last inner city seat, Manchester Withington, while the Alliance gained Southport with a 7% swing. The Liberal Chief Whip, David Alton, held off Labour in Liverpool, Mossley Hill, but his majority was down by 2,000, despite the local controversy over militant. The considerable figure of Cyril Smith suffered a much reduced majority in Rochdale, reflecting a night of disappointment for the Alliance. The Tories' closest shave came in Wallasey, where the former Foreign Office Minister Linda Chalker was returned by only 279 votes after three recounts. The Midlands was the battleground which could make or break Neil Kinnock's bid for number 10, and Labour spectacularly failed to make the necessary hole in the 1983 result of 70 Conservative seats and 30 Labour. With just six seats to be declared, the Midlands remained substantially as before. Labour lost Rennie Short's old constituency of Wolverhampton North East to the Conservatives, but gained the country's most marginal seat at Leicester South, plus Leicester East, Nottingham North and the Reakin. Parliamentary stars, though, such as Edwina Curry, Tony Benn, Nigel Lawson and Roy Hattersley are all safely back at Westminster. The Tory and Labour's share of the vote was slightly up at the expense of the Alliance, which once again failed to win any Midland seats. And that was the uh, look at the regional results. Of course, the national result, if you've just joined us, just woken up, is that Mrs Thatcher is in for a third term.